I'm Suzanne. I'm a compulsive overeater. Hi, I weigh and measure three meals a day from the Cambridge Gray Sheet, commit them to my sponsor, don't eat in between no matter what, and abstinence gives me my life. Uh, looking around, and there might be a person or two or three who, who hasn't heard my story yet. Uh, I started out as a normal eater in a sad house that was also sometimes fun. And um, ultimately, when I was 14 years old, I started drugging with food. I started with fruit. And by the time I was 16, I turned to uh, sugar and flour products and, and things like that, junk, junk food things. And I couldn't stop. Once I started, I couldn't stop. Um, in a sense, I, I would like to say that there were there were always little angels in my life, just people who came in who gave me approval or encouragement. Uh, but I didn't know how to ask for help till I got into this program, I think, really. Like, or I, I should say these programs initially 35 years ago and ultimately 25 years ago, Gray Sheet. Um, when I think of what my construct was for what you should do if you were sad or scared or some, <clears throat> something had happened, um, I think I, I was just trying to just make it, get through the day, not be found out. I didn't want to be found out as somebody who uh, really didn't, didn't know how to win, how to be popular, um, how to function ultimately. Uh, I, I, I was a high achiever until I was about 14 and um, the food and ceasing to achieve happened at the same time. Uh, and they're not only, they're not entirely connected. Uh, that was also the age where you had to start doing schoolwork at home. And so like independently and uh, that wasn't anything I knew how to do and my home wasn't a, a place that uh, enc encouraged or supported things, positive things. So uh, anyway, I started kind of failing in school and ultimately when I was 16, I stopped doing all my schoolwork and I just limped along for a while uh, I went to a college I hadn't ever heard of, and I was a very competitive student, but I, I couldn't get into the schools that I wanted to go to. And um, anyway, I in a, in a way, I could say that higher power kind of was watching over me because I went to a college that was pass fail so you basically didn't have to do a whole lot. And um, it was a very sad time. I think I'm, I'm a bit low energy right now because I did a medical test this morning for actually for a study I'm in, not because I have a, any medical concerns, but I, I think that also has me tired. Um, but when I, think back to my pre-programmed days, that also, that's, it's just so dark. Um, I had to steal food. I had to take my roommate's food because I couldn't give myself permission to buy the foods I wanted to binge on because I was going to be on a diet starting now. And, uh, but then if it was anywhere near me, I had to have it. And then I had to replace it and stuff like that. So it was a, a life of a lot of deceit and shame. And in between, 
sometimes uh, things went well or I functioned or accomplished a thing or two. But ultimately, I felt different and inferior. I had a friend who wasn't a compulsive overeater. And the very fact that she could arrive at our dinner dates wanting food made me feel inferior to her because I arrived every single time full of food because whenever I was alone, I binged. So whenever I was with people, I was nauseatingly full. That was just the way I lived. And I was so envious of her because she, oh, I'm so hungry. Mm. And she'd enjoy her food. Well, that's me now, ha! Except that I'm never actually hungry. I'm just not sickeningly full. Uh, I, I don't, I eat a lot and I don't have huge gaps between meals and I, I just don't experience hunger or, or hunger that I notice. Um, but I didn't realize when this program found me initially, as I say, through OA and then ultimately through Gray Sheet, I had no idea it was going to treat anything but the food and my fat. Little did I know that I was going to be shown a whole new way of living. I was going to be shown a way not to get into despair anytime something didn't go my way. I was going to be shown a way to try to see my side of the street and at least to learn that staring at the other side of the street doesn't work out well for either person. Uh, I'm, I'm studying that in a more intense way these days because I want, I want to be able to do well with people. So, so I'm learning more that way in, a, in another fellowship and in this fellowship because in this fellowship, many people attend also other fellowships so recovery or support in all these other areas is also available right here in Gray Sheet. When I came in to OA, a little short of age 31, I was a very crushed human being and, and just didn't know when it was okay to stand up for myself, what was yes, what was no, when should you talk, when should you be quiet? I just didn't know that stuff. And um, little by little, I know a little more today, just a little more. And now it's so funny, this just occurs to me as a topic that because I'm kind of, hold on one sec, sorry, recording, I'm taking some water. that because I'm getting into some gradual, graduate level life topics now, uh, this one is possible romance, or possible relationship. Um, I'm needing a lot more help and I'm feeling a lot more feelings that don't come up when I'm just chugging along with only me and, you know, having my own little self-directed goals. No, that's hard for me too. It's hard not to have food to numb out with. And when I don't have food, then I want things. I want things in life. I want professional satisfaction. I want artistic growth. I want healthy relationships. And when I don't eat, the time that I would have spent eating, I can spend asking for help and trying to implement it. Um, taking suggestions, taking actions, those are all new concepts. I learned that I don't have to accomplish things one mountain at a time, but one step at a time is perfectly fine. And that was never fine enough for me. Uh, I, I would always think, but I have so much to make up for. That's not going to be enough. I've got to do so much more today. And then it would be so overwhelming. I'd do nothing. So I'm learning to be willing to tolerate reality and tolerate process. 
um, my path here has involved having the same sponsor for the last 20 years. But first, I think I had five or six other sponsors. So that's a word to anybody who may be having trouble finding a sponsor or, or developing a good relationship that um, I at least can report that the, there was an exploratory process or whatever. We're recording, somebody asked, why are we recording this meeting? The speaker is being recorded, but, but others will not be recorded. Sharers will not be recorded. This is something we're doing because we have a YouTube channel now. Okay. Um, I am so grateful for the friendships I have built in this community, um, the new people I'm meeting. I'm so grateful that even through people who aren't my friends, I get such jewels of recovery wisdom through their shares, sometimes through a phone call, but sometimes it's not a person with whom I have phone contact, but I still they're, they're still there to be my teacher and I'm there to be their teacher if they have, a, have an interest in absorbing whatever I can give them. Um, a lot of my process has here in the last 35 years has involved being encouraged just not to give up when it looks dark not to give up when I hit an obstacle. Giving up is very easy for me. And I don't, I'm not even making myself terminally unique, but I, I just don't want to speak for anybody else. It's super easy for me to say, well, there's the, there's the proof. I'm out of this project. I'm out of this experience, this relationship. Where's the television? And it used to be, where's the television and where's the food? Now it could be a, a terrific meal, but I know my higher power wants better for me. I know my higher power wants me to have the joy of overcoming obstacles and completing projects and being of use in this world, Get creating something that could be helpful in this world. It doesn't have to be to a grand number of people, but just to be a gift in the world. That's why we're all created. It's my mission. And that, you know, part of that mission includes watching a heck of a lot of television sometimes because that feeds me and it gives me joy and it makes me laugh and it teaches me amazing things about relationships. I mean, I get a lot from television, but, oh, but it's not the only thing. And uh, my life feels like a real adventure these days. I create things I never thought I could create. I'm starting to do things I didn't do before. Um, not trying to be mysterious, but like, like arranging music. I never arranged music, but now I arrange music sometimes. Anyway, they said to me when I came in to OA, just stay abstinent and all the rest will follow. And then they said that in many different ways in gray sheet. And I, sometimes I'd be in a really low place and I'd think like, well, this is some great, uh, you know, cult saying, just do it our way and all will be given to you. But staying abstinent, staying away from drugging, staying away from hiding in the sand, staying away from harming me, is very productive and it is awakening parts of me. It's awakening deadened cells that dared not come out because there wasn't a safe protector there. I'm learning better how to parent myself and I'm inviting into my life people who can better support me and guide me. It's a wonderful thing. I, I do have outside help, which is invaluable to me and I mentioned I go to other fellowships as well. Um, this has been a wonderful ride so far. 
I'll just mention some statistics. My top weight was over 50 pounds more than I am now, and I was throwing up. I have hemorrhaged my vocal cords irreparably more than once. I'm a professional singer. I've had two successful surgeries, but the hemorrhages were all due to this disease because when I start to eat, I can't stop and I have to throw up so I can keep eating. So I'm a testament to science and to this community. And I, I you know what I wanna end with? You may have heard me share this before. There's a gray sheeter who used to say, I can ask for too little help in gray sheet, but I can never ask for too much. And I just want to end with a prayer for everybody listening, and including me, that we ask for help, that I never underestimate my need for being heard, being witnessed, being supported, having somebody reality check with me, having somebody check my wiring. I like people talking about, I need a checkup from the neck up. Uh, I hope I keep inviting people in to help me. And I know also that not every people is a safe people. And we can discover that, but it's a big community. And if I have one phone call that doesn't work out, I can make another and another. And my experience, I can't say this is an axiom that I'll always get the help I need. It's my experience that I've always gotten the help I need. So especially, and more lately because I'm just getting healthier. So I attract healthier people in my life. Thank you for listening. Um, God bless everybody. Don't eat no matter what, and I won't either. You're all worth it. Thank you.